Hi, I'm Chris Frame and welcome aboard Pacific Explorer. I'm so happy to say that Australian cruising is finally back with p and Cruises' Australian flagship Pacific Explorer being the first ship to take Australians back to sea. I was aboard the Pacific Explorer as a guest of p and Cruises, so a huge thank you to p and for the opportunity to experience the Pacific Explorer's first passenger sailing since the pandemic. The ship was docked at the White Bay Cruise Terminal, one of the main cruise ports in Sydney. Despite this being the first p and cruise in over two years, Embarkation was simple, with joining passengers asked to arrive in a staggered format to ensure minimal queues. p and Australia is using the Verify app to help verify travel documents and reduce the time needed for check-in. The app took a while to get working properly, with several travellers I spoke to also experiencing similar issues. However, on Embarkation Day, it all worked fine, and once we got past the app's technical hurdles, we were able to log our COVID test results, ID documents, and complete the health questionnaire before leaving our hotel. My boarding group was the first for the day, and I was lucky to be among the first passengers to step aboard Pacific Explorer in over two years, which was really exciting. My Big Cruise podcast co-host Barry Downs was also aboard, and he arrived several hours later, but he had a similarly smooth embarkation experience. Once aboard, it was time to explore the ship, and I'll be uploading a tour of Pacific Explorer in the coming weeks, so make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss the tour of the ship. Well, it wouldn't be one of my videos without a little bit of history. Pacific Explorer started her career in 1997 as the Dawn Princess. The second in four Southern Class cruise ships, she sailed with Princess Cruises until 2017 when she was transferred to p and Australia fleet. The ship became the flagship of p and Australia and following the pandemic is the last of the Southern Class cruise ships in the Carnival Corp fleet. Pacific Explorer was given a large scale overhaul when she was transferred to p and five years ago and was also given additional updates during the cruise pause in 2020. She'll be joined in 2022 by Pacific Encounter and Pacific Adventure. Inside, Pacific Explorer looks great. She is easy to navigate and is decorated in a bright and vibrant style, which makes her onboard atmosphere quite different from the more muted decor she had when she was a Dawn Princess. In many areas, Pacific Explorer appears like new, with dynamic carpeting and wall coverings transforming and modernizing many of the spaces. And I'll go into this in more detail in my video tour of the ship. COVID has brought a few changes to life on board the ship. Firstly, the vast majority of travellers need to be vaccinated, and a negative PCR or rat test is required before boarding. Once aboard, masks are required, but only when physical distancing can't be achieved, so mainly in the show lounges and other crowded venues. Crew are on hand to pass out masks for those travellers who forgot, and if you ask me, wearing a mask is a small price to pay to be cruising again. Boat drill has also changed. Gone are the days of carrying the life jacket to your muster station, now you simply present to your muster station sometime prior to the ship setting sail. Your cruise card is scanned and you're given a short one-on-one -on -one briefing. The ship's general emergency signal is sounded before departure. And a video, which you watch in your cabin, is supposed to take care of the rest. As the afternoon turned into evening, the top deck became a hive of excitement. Pacific Explorer's open decks are home to swimming pools, an ice creamery, and bars, so there were lots of cheerful people counting down to departure. We set sail, and the ship made her way towards the Sydney Harbour Bridge, as our captain gave an emotional welcome over the PA. After two years and two months, the ship is cruising again. Then, as Pacific Explorer passed under the bridge for the first time since the shutdown, the whistle sounded to cheers from all of us on deck. During the course of the cruise, we enjoyed many of the amenities of the ship. Despite the long layup, the crew were amazing, and I can honestly say this was among the happiest and most attentive crew I've ever sailed with. From our cabin attendants to the restaurant staff to the enthusiastic crew staff, everybody seemed genuinely delighted to be back at sea, both crew and passengers alike. Oh, it's incredible, Chris. The, uh, 
the atmosphere and the excitement of you know people in the terminal, people that have not been had a job for for all this time, and then that excitement builds as you walk up the gangway and onto the ship, and the crew were just so excited to welcome everybody back, um, and then that extends up obviously amongst the passengers and and everybody on board. It's just such a nice vibe, and uh, you soon settle into that relaxing routine of a, the best holiday, which is a cruise holiday, of course. First time on P&O Australia, which is very different to P&O UK, and uh, I have to say I like it. It's uh, typically Aussie, typically relaxed, um, great food, great music. Um, you really can't ask for more when you combine it with this great service that they're providing on board. Oh, wow. Um, first of all, you wouldn't realize that this ship's been, you know, sitting in the water for the last two years doing nothing. It's been so well appointed, so well looked after. And I'm a jazz fan, so I did enjoy the Blue Room. Um, it's a really great, neat little jazz club uh, on board. And just by there's a really great little hidden bar as well so the waterfront restaurant as well um, such a well-appointed restaurant service is incredible the food has been great and um, again just the crew and the service just just makes it some other voyage highlights included the new signature show purple rabbit which while attracting a small cover charge is worth every cent hosted in the black circus lounge it was non-stop laughs thrills and cheers it is strictly adults only and is worth checking out though if you're easily offended i wouldn't recommend it there were two hilarious comedians on board who brought the house down on both nights, while the ship's production team performed Rock of Ages in the Marquee Theatre, which got passengers dancing during the finale. There was a great selection of live music on board, with the Explorers Hotel and Blue Room being two popular venues, and live musicians were playing in the atrium each evening. Cabins aboard the ship are spacious and well-appointed. We travelled in a standard balcony room, which was nicely decorated. The beige and blue-green colours in the room were perhaps the biggest tell that the Pacific Explorer originally cruised for Princess Cruises, as it resembles a decor on many other Princess ships from the late 90s and early 2000s. But the room was well kept and maintained and did not give away its 25-year vintage. We did have an issue with cold water in the shower on day one, however after reporting it to our cabin attendant it was quickly fixed and we had hot showers for the rest of the cruise. I've travelled on many different cruise ships across a variety of brands, from Cunard to Royal Caribbean and even p and Cruises UK, and this cruise on Pacific Explorer is without doubt one of the best cruises I've ever been on. Even though it was a short trip, it was long enough to relax and unwind, and really enjoy being back at sea for the first time since 2020. p and Australia offers a fun, casual and entertaining onboard experience. The atmosphere of this first cruise was really special, and the crew was simply amazing, and the entertainment was top notch. We also covered this historic voyage on the Big Cruise podcast. So check out the podcast in the description below or in Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts or wherever else you get your podcasts. I can't wait to be back at sea later again this year. And until then, I hope to see you on board.